Hi, I'm Dr. Kenneth J. I'm co-founder of RowForge and I also created the programs that are in the RowForge app and I'm an avid rower myself. Um, let's talk a little bit about how performance is measured, measured specifically in regards to the, uh, the rowing machine here. And <clears throat> of course um, uh, connected to how the RowForge app uh, works as well. So the thing is, is that <clears throat> traditionally rowing performance and rowing speed and the, the, the primary rowing metric has been your average pace per 500 meters. And if you're familiar with the PM5 monitor on the Concept2 rower, you will know that it has a setting that shows you that split time. But the thing is, is that it's not actually not the most accurate metric that's there. The most important metric and, and what you should be concerned about, whether it's in terms of energy utilization, how much calories you're burning, uh, or how well you're performing, uh, how fast you're going, you actually have to look at watts. Um, watts are uh, a rate of energy usage, so, so uh, one watt is one joule per second being put into the machine. And you can also get that the, on the display and the RowForge app will show you the wattage as well. And it, if you've tried out the RowForge app a couple of times, you will see that when the tests are done, um, that it actually is mostly concerned about what is your average wattage over whatever distance or time that you rode. And that's because that's the most accurate way to say how well did you perform. Just like a bicycle rider will also, a Tour de France rider will also be concerned about how many watts are they generating consistently. We are interested in how many watts can be generated consistently over whatever time you're rowing or whatever distance that you're rowing. The higher the wattage, uh, the better the performance, the faster your rowing time will be. So for instance, uh, one of the top world uh, rowers on the rowing agarometer on the Concept2 on a 2K, uh, they will put out close to 600 watts on average, which is equivalent to somewhere around 5 minutes, 32, 33, 34, maybe 40 seconds, 5 minutes, 40 seconds, uh, which is world class uh, and very uh, around, uh, around that is the world record. Um, and from that wattage, we can pretty much calculate anything. We can calculate the time, we can calculate how, much, how many calories are being used, um, and all of these things. So the performance metric to be concerned about is actually how fast you're using your energy. And if you know for how long you've been using it, remember it's joules per second, and if you know how many seconds you've been working, then you know how many joules in total work you've been doing. And then it's just a matter of doing a quick conversion and getting that into calories. Um, um, so, so the thing is, is that if you also want to compare yourself to others, then it's always a good idea to, to compare the, um, the wattage on the rower. Uh, the RowForge app will record everything that the PM5 monitor on the Concept2 rowing agometer will show you. Uh, and it will also, if you do the tests and, um, and click into the profile in the Viking uh, power profile, it will actually show you uh, a projected uh, versus your actual if you base everything off of your 2K. That's for another video though where we dig a little bit deeper into the Kurt Jensen power profile and how it's been adapted to um, to the row four jets specifically because we tweaked it a little bit to make it even better. Uh, but that's actually a profile that can be used to predict where you, where you should put your primary focus in your training. For now though, the key concept and the key takeaway is get accustomed to looking at the wattage. So <clears throat> there's a setting on the RowForge app that will show you the instantaneous wattage, meaning how many watts are you generating right here and now per stroke. And then there's also an average watt wattage over the course of time that you've been rowing that will change as well, but it's not gonna change, uh, change as fast as the instantaneous wattage. What I usually go by and what I gauge my performance metrics by is the average wattage for whatever distance or whatever time I row. So for instance, if I row a sprint in a 100 meter, I know that I want to generate around 900 watts. And that's my metric and that's my goal to beat. Uh, same thing if I row a 2K. My very best 2K is around 350 watts. It's probably different for you. Some are higher, some are lower. It doesn't really matter, but that's when I know when I'm peaking, when I'm at my very best, 
that's how much I can do. And then I can also gauge if I then have time off from training and I get back to it and I hop on and do a 2K and I see I end up at 280 watts, I know how far from my very best that I am and where I should put, uh, put the uh, majority of my effort in my training. So it's a simple metric. It's kind of like thinking about this from a straight training perspective is that you know what your 1RM is. Um, and you you know what your 5RM is and your 10RM and your 15RM and trying to, to make sure that all of those climb at the same time. The same thing can be said about the rowing. You want to make sure that your average wattage all out test for 100 meters, 500 meters, for 1K, for 2K, for 5K, 6K, 10K and so on and so forth, they all climb. But you also have to choose in training which one is the right one to focus on and that's a little bit more challenging but that's why we have the biking uh, biking power profile in the row forge app as well for you to take a look at all right i think that's enough for uh, for this video with the performance metric to uh, look out for it is wattage uh which is joules per second um and until next time i'm dr kenneth j and i'll see you